Welcome back to some more Miyakashi. So where we last left off, apparently Shion's new revenge goal is to kill off Keiichi. Side of all things, because um, Satoko is, I'm guessing she's already dead at this point when she got tortured long enough, and Rika is already dead. And Shion is still stuck in that jail cell in the underground. So let's continue reading, as usual. It took them a long time to come for me. I had to wait until the following morning. I opened the gate without checking who was ringing the doorbell. I didn't even care who it was. If it was the police, that would be fine with me. If it was Keichan, <laughs> could he defeat me? Keiichi and Reina were there. Well, this is unusual. Aren't you two going to school? We stayed home today. Hmm, Keichan is one thing, but you too, Reina? You two are such troublemakers. I laughed. Well, let's not just stand here. Come on in. I didn't think Reina would come. I thought it would be either the police or Keichan alone. I'll try tricking tricking Keichan into coming with me to the underground storehouse. Reina, why don't you try to figure out what I'm attempting to do and stop me? You too, Keichan. If you figured out I was Shion, why don't you try to figure out the rest? I will act like the demon. I will struggle until the very last moment. So don't hold back. Please don't hesitate to kill a filthy demon like me. Mion. First, I have something to apologize for. You do? What for? Well, on the night of Watanagashi, the ritual storehouse behind the shrine, I went in there. No words. I didn't expect this to start with an apology. Okay, so he admitted his sin of entering the ritual storehouse. I guess that was manly of him. I don't even care if the storehouse is forbidden anymore, whatever. That rule came from those who believed it was even a sacred place at all. Mion, you called Rika Chan and Satoka the day before last, didn't you? I don't remember doing so. If you have a reason to think so, could you let me hear it? It was evening, before dinner time. Rika Chan should have come here, bringing a big bottle of soy sauce to have you share some of their. Reina spoke with confidence. She wasn't even trying to gauge my reaction. She was simply telling me the truth. That cleverness was very pleasant to see. Why do you think that? It's not hard to understand. Michan, you saw it too, didn't you? Rika Chan's room. Hmm? Hmm. There was chilled tofu but no soy sauce. Plus the big bottle of soy sauce that should have been under the sink was nowhere to be found. <laughs> what? Is that why she should she would have come here? Reina sure is sharp. I tried to beat around the bush, but she was confident in her conclusions. She was cornering me. She was doing such a great job too, it really put me at ease. Okay, demon. Reina knows what she's talking about. What kind of excuse are you going to come up with now? It's a long explanation, so I'll get to the point. The contents of that refrigerator provided a vivid account of what you said over the phone when you lured her out. There it is. This game is over. Reina, I was right about you. I don't like you. You really are just too sharp. Shion is so obtuse that she never even recognized this side of you. That's... <laughs> I had no idea I had such an incredible detective right next to me the whole time. I can't believe you figure out everything down to the phone conversation, just what was inside the fridge. <laughs> you've got me there. You've got me, you've got me. <laughs> I laughed like crazy. I laughed because I was having so much fun. I sensed the poison inside of my stomach dissipating and felt free and refreshed. Mion, the police have suspected you for a long time now. Oishi-san's officers have had the house under observation so that they could break in at any time. Keichan was threatening me. He was telling me I couldn't run or resist, 
so I should just surrender and accept my fate. You aren't doing that intensely enough, Keichan. Shouldn't you grab my collar and knock me to the ground? Today is the day I'm prepared to die. After that, they went easy, because they just wanted to know the reason why Mion committed such crimes. You all are being too lenient about this. I'm a demon. I'm a murderer. Are you saying that if you can understand the reasoning, murder is okay? A demon is a demon. A murderer is a murderer. Whether their motive is to have fun, to live, or to take revenge, that makes no difference. Why do you even want to know that? Why don't you just tackle me and take me, take me to the police? Look there, the demon is trying to deceive you. It's a pleasure to meet you both. I am the successor of the Sonozaki family. Mion, welcome to the Sonozaki family's house today. I'd like to greet you on behalf of our leader, Oryu. You seem to want to ask various questions. I'd like to answer everything as clearly as possible. I then told him about the strange events that led to Onikafuchi Village becoming Hinamizawa, which Takano-san has told me about before. About half of it was the truth, but the other half was completely made up. I just made it sound like it was only natural that their best friend committed such a gruesome, cr gruesome crime. Keiichi and Reina were both overwhelmed by the history of Onikafuji Village, which was swallowed by this gloomy fate. Oh well, I guess I made it sound interesting enough. I'm sure they enjoyed hearing me tell the story. But you know, I'm the one who committed the incidents that happened in the present time. What was the point in listening to those old folk tales? Are you thinking it will make your best friend's crime easier to swallow? You're just trying to satisfy yourselves. I'm a demon. I'm a murderer. I have sinned. These old folk tale these old folk tales have nothing to do with the crimes I have committed. The way those two listened to me so intensely almost made a fun. I told them that people used to make canned human meat and conducted gruesome research during the war. Those were things Takano-san told me. Hey you two, haven't you realized yet? Haven't you realized that what I'm talking about has nothing to do with what we're dealing with right now. You both look so serious. You two are such fools. So that Hinamizawa village might once more be like Unikafuji village, so that we may again be a sacred existence. Is sacred existence. Worthy of worship. That's the mission of those who inherit the demon of the Sonozaki main family. Those who inherit the demon. For generations, the Sanazaki family has had a custom of including the character for a demon in the names of his successors. If you write out my name on your hand, it should appear plain as day. Keiichi tried to write Mion on his palm. Oh, she's right. The character for a demon is in there. Not only in my name either. The demon is engraved on my body as well. I stood up and made to show my bare back. Of course, I don't actually have a tattoo there. It's okay, Mei-chan. You don't need to show us, okay? Thank you. I laughed a little. Oh yeah, because Shion is playing me on. <laughs> and Reina, Reina doesn't want to show it because, you know what? Shion doesn't want to hide, doesn't want to give that away. I laughed, anyway, I laughed a little. They must really believe that I'm their best... <laughs> wow. They must really believe that I'm their best friend, Mion. My goodness, the demon has won already. They were doing so well at the beginning, too. I eventually sat back down after I finished telling my made-up tear-jerker stories. It's your loss if you all shed any tears now. I looked at Keiichi. He wasn't crying, but he was overcome by emotion. I looked at Reina. Surprisingly, she still maintained an aggressive look, showing me her will to fight. But Rika-chan and Satoko-chan, you killed them, didn't you, Mi-chan? You're good, Reina. You know what I just told you is an excuse for murder. You usually act like such a goofball, but that's not how you really are. You sure are something. You're far sharper than Shion. 
I'm not saying that it's okay if you killed other people. Regardless, Michan, you killed Rika-chan and Satoko-chan. I'm not trying to justify what I've done. I have a demon inside of me. The demon is in my name, in my body, and also in my soul. But the demon wasn't the one who killed him. I did. Sonozaki Mion did. Rika-chan and Satoko died because Mion wanted them dead. That will never change. <laughs> You're right, Reina. Come on, Reina. Try to figure out who I really am. You still believe Shion, my victim, is the real culprit. Poor Shion. I'm making Reina believe that you're responsible. That was it for Reina, though. She couldn't figure out I was Mion. Please, turn yourself in. Reina spoke to Mion. We'll go with you. We'll never leave a friend by herself. Crying children and Reina are the only things I can't beat. Ha 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 ha. Too bad, Reina. I've won. I'm well aware of how serious my own crimes are. Even if, even if they accept me turning myself in, I'll probably never be able to come back here. No words. So, I'd like you to hear one last selfish request. What is it? Thirty minutes is fine. Just let me have some time alone with Keijan. Eh? Keiji looked startled to suddenly hear his name. You're so insensitive, Keiji. That's what made my sister cry. Keiji-kun, is that okay with you? If you don't want to, then I won't make you. She's right. It's okay if you don't want to. After all, I'm a demon, and Keichan is a bona fide human who lived, who moved here from somewhere else. For us to be compatible, as long as Oyashiro sama doesn't exist to meditate. Meditate? There's no meditate. Because there's no T in it. Exists to mediate. Mediate? It simply is impossible. Keiichi hesitated a little. Come on, Keichan. Condemn me. Oh, jeez. Condemn me and tell me you'd never go. Sure, it's fine. Thank you. Fool! I'd like to thank you too, Keiichi-kun. Reina stood up. As promised, she made to leave. Uh, it's fine, Reina. You can wait right here. I just want to go around the garden with Keichan. If you're bored, you can go to my room. You can read any manga you like. Ah, and if there are any volumes you want, you might as well take them. I don't want to. Michan's books belong to Michan. Reina couldn't bring them back home with her so freely. You're such a good kid. Only at times like this. I took Reina's head and rubbed it like Satoshi kun used to do to me. Okay, let's go, Keichan. The game was over. Too bad, Reina. At least this was more fun than if Keichan came alone. If he did, he could have asked me to run away with him after hearing my stories. Reina's eyes were like those of a judge. In those eyes, I sensed both affection and observance. I said 30 minutes, so she would probably only wait for 30 minutes. You could say half an hour. It's still the same thing. If I took even a second longer, she'll, she'd call a, she'd call Oishi. I'm a little disappointed. Reina still thinks I'm Mion. She didn't manage to see through me. I thought someone like her would see the demon in me. I guess I was wrong. Too bad. Keiichi followed me after putting his shoes on. Can I hold your arm? Such a humble request. I don't mind. I took Keiichi's arm. It was as warm as Satoshikin's. I felt a little bewildered. Do you get kind of nervous with your arm through mine? You're not thinking, for example, that I'd suddenly put you in a world-class joint lock or anything? You two say the same things. I don't think that. At all. He was remembering the time when I'd held his arm in town. I think Shion liked you, Kei-chan. I see. 
I told him how my sister felt. Shion was with Satoshi-kun for a long time, but what they said, what they had was friendship. They never had anything more than that. That was why she fell in love with Keiichi. If I were in her position, I would have, I would also have fallen in love with them. If Shion was able to fall in love with them, then I could fall in love with them too. Keiichi smiled gently. I almost saw Satoshi-kun in that smile. The Keiji I knew was worthless and superficial. I never realized he could smile like Satoshi-kun. Mian and Shion, you got along well, didn't you? Well, I wonder. Kei-chan, do you think your right hand and left hand get along? Huh? My right hand and left hand? I don't think you could describe them as getting along or not. That's how our relationship is. You can't measure it by how well we get along. We've been together since we were born. We've been living in this world as a pair. But I was Mion, and she was Shion. Mion was treated specially, and I insisted on being her. Of course, that was unpleasant for Shion. Deciding to be fair, we switched places all the time. We were probably different from other identical twins. We didn't only like the same things or do things the same way. We even managed to share our knowledge and experiences. When we talked about our experiences, we could share them. As Mian and Xion, we shared everything. That was why each of us was both Mian and Xion at the same time. No, maybe Xion was the only one who thought that way. I was a little different than that. I was simply letting Xion be Mian once in a while. I was Mian the successor to the Sonazaki family. I was supposed to be treated specially. I always thought that was my privilege. Just like everyone tried to distinguish between Mian and Xion, I also tried to distinguish between us. For example, one of your hands is dominant, so there will always be a better hand. If you only had one oven mitt, you would put it on your dominant hand without thinking, right? I think maybe it was like that for us. No words. That doesn't mean, though, that anyone would be okay with losing their left hand. It's that kind of unexplainable relationship. I think that maybe you live too close together and just stop being able to see it, but I think that means you get along pretty well. I'm an, I'm an only child, so the day before the festival, I was really jealous of when you and Xion were messing around with each other. I think you're jealous of something that doesn't exist. Yes, we twins used to have a lot of fun trading places with each other, but now that we have such distinctive, but now that we have such distinctly different personalities, our resemblance only gets in the way. As an older sister, I felt I was mean for thinking that way, so as punishment, I became Xion. Who am I? I never had a solid identity in the first place. I was Mion, then I was Xion. I should have just accepted that, but something has changed. I don't even know if, if I'm Mion or Xion anymore. Had I really been stupid enough to hope that Reyna would figure that out for me? Xion is still alive. Really? Keiichi looked into my eyes. I nodded quietly. Yeah, I'd been thinking to give her the most horrible death of all, so I kept her locked up. I never did think of a good way to do it, though. This was a lie. I've already come up with ideas, and I've already begun, begun to execute them. I dumped the hag into the well in front of Shion. I dumped Kimiyoshi and Rika in there. I even killed Sotoko too. And right now I'm plotting to kill Keiichi, who Shion fell in love with. I am a demon. Any such gruesome act is simply pleasure to me. That's when I felt a warm hand rubbing my head. It wasn't Satoshi's hand. Oh my god. It wasn't Satoshi's hand, but Keiichi's. Keiichi and Satoshi-kun are totally different. Why did Shion fall in love with him? His rough hand didn't make me happy. That he understood my feelings was just my imagination. I wasn't happy and it didn't feel good. It didn't. Come with me. I want you to see all of my sins. Although, Kei-chan, 
It might be the worst thing you've ever seen. I am going to commit my final crime. I am going to let you see it. I am going to let Xion see it. When I do, are you still going to think I'm your best friend? Poor Xion. Keichan is going to die thinking it's you who's killing him. If you want to turn back, now's your chance. I don't know what impression you have of me on Sanzaki, but it will surely change. Once you go inside, it'll never, it'll never change. Wait. But it will surely change once you go inside. It'll never change, I'll say as many times as I need to. Mian Sanazaki is the best friend I could ever have. You are such a fool. You don't sound cool at all. I don't understand human feelings because I'm now a demon. But I think I can understand why she loves you. I opened the iron door to the underground storehouse and beckoned Keiichi inside. Come on, Keiji. This is obviously a trap, don't you see? This basement is transparently suspicious. Don't you think you should run to the police? But Keiichi was reckless. He swallowed, then stepped inside. Huh. You really are a fool. We went down the stairs to the basement, and I led him into the torture room. Oh boy. Everyone is shocked their first time visiting this room. I used to be that way. Of course, Keiichi looked surprised too, but he was trying not to show it. Obviously he wanted to express his shock at seeing this horrifying room, but he also knew that if he voiced that shock, that he would be rejecting his best friend, who was trying to confess her sins to him. So he did everything he could to stifle his surprise. According to something a family head from a long time ago wrote, blood splatter has impact despite the fact that it doesn't tax the sacrifice. Watanagashi was meant as a deterrent after all. My ancestors thought of all kind thought up all different kinds of showy torture. That's a space for the audience. Watanagashi is a deterrent after all. It wouldn't make sense if there were no guests. <sighs> no words. Keiji smiled quietly as he listened to me. No matter what cruelty came out of my mouth, he would embrace me. Was this really the superficial Keiji Marbaru I knew? Right here is where I killed everyone. There were no spectators to watch me, but I held a Watanagashi of my own. Well, perhaps there was one spectator. Huh? A spectator? Me. I, the demon, was watching the entire time Mian held the ceremony. I started to laugh. How many hints do you need, Keiji? When are you going to figure out I'm not really your best friend? Come on, hurry up. You're running out of time. The game is almost over. This was a game. This was a game of murder. I had killed people, using my revenge for, Sat for Satoshi-kun as an excuse. The demon was trying to capture Keiji and kill him before Mian's eyes. But Keiji had a chance. If he figured out I wasn't his best friend, then he'd win. If not, he was out. When did I come up with that rule? I guess it was sometime today, or did I come up with it just a minute ago? Since the two of them aren't too bright, I decided to be easy on them, I guess. You are Mian's best friends, right? Don't you believe in her? Have you already made Mian into a murderer within yourselves? Why don't you try to protect the Mian within you? Why don't you try to believe your best friend can't be a murderer? If you could believe until the very end, like Satoka did, you would have realized I wasn't Mion. Your best friend... Your best friend, but just someone who looks like her. But if you can't, if you still believe that I'm Mion, then you're just like me. I killed the Satoshi-kun within me so easily, and you will do the same. You don't deserve to live. Back there is the prison. Is Xion there? You're not going to make it. Once we reach Xion's cell, your time is up. The demon will win. Xion! Is that Xion? Keichan! Is that you, Keichan? 
Keiichi ran to the cell. Are you alright, Shion? Are you hurt? N no, no. No! Shion screamed. I was standing right behind Keiichi. It was time. My preparations to kill the boy she loved were complete. For her, this was going to be the worst possible torture. Calm down, Shion. Everything is over now. Everything. Keiji tried to quell Shion's distress by talking to her in a calm voice. It was such a funny sight. Keiji was the only one who had no idea what was going on. Oh boy. This is not going to look pretty. Shion, how have you been? No more, please. No more. I don't want to see anyone else die. If you hate me, then just kill me already. I'm the one you hate most, right? Kill me. Kill me right now. Sis. Calm down, Shion. It's all over now. It's going to be alright, so calm down. Relax. I won't kill you. No, I won't kill you just yet. <laughs> it's game over. I gave you enough chances. You quartered me quite well once. But that was it. You couldn't figure out that I'm not your best friend, Mion. You couldn't believe that Mion isn't a murderer. Please stop. Don't kill Keicha. Keicha has nothing to do with this, does he? If you're going to kill someone, then kill me right now. I don't have, I don't want anyone else to die. Ah, 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 ah. If you want to die that badly, then after I've killed this man, I'll take my time making mincemeat out of you. In accordance with the ancient rites, I'll do it slowly, starting with your extremities. I'll shave you down and mince you to meat bits. I had that mincing machine set up specifically for you, after all. Or would it be funnier if I were to mince up Keichan in front of you? Hey, quit it already! What do you have to gain by scaring her at this point? No! Keichan, run away! Here you are, demon. Go ahead and take my soul. I've been living my life to avenge Satoshi-kun, but that wasn't what he wanted from me. That was just for my own satisfaction. I couldn't even face Satoshi-kun, so I'll bring this to an end in the way I want. The world became a total mess. Satoshi-kun hates me, and I hate myself too. I'm going to complete my revenge. I don't want anyone to sympathize with me. Sympathize with me. I won't pretend to be some tragic heroine either. I'm going to become a murderer that nobody could sympathize with. So please, grant a suitable final moment to me. A bluish white flash filled the huge cave. Keiji fell down like a doll. Shion reached out to him from the other side of the bars. She screamed at me not to kill Keiji. Go ahead, cry and blame me. Don't even think of offering your forgiveness. I am the most rotten existence in this world. So please, grant me the worst possible ending. Shion begged me desperately to let Keiji go. I simply abused her, slandered her, and disgraced her. The more Shion suffered, the deeper I'd fall into hell. It wasn't enough. It wasn't even close to deep enough. It wasn't deep enough to compensate for my sins. I dragged Keiichi to the table that I tried to put Satoko on and restrained him there. Keiichi began to move sluggishly. The stun gun must have... The stun gun must have not worked too well on him. Can you hear it, Shion? I'm going to get started now. Savor Keichan's flesh. Flesh. Fresh screams to your heart's content. Give it a fucking rest. Wait, what the? That was a weird. It's my Twitch notifications going off. Give it a fucking rest. Keiichi squeezed out those words. He sounded good, like he was about to bite me. Awake at last, are we? I lied before, you know. 
about having wanted to give Xion the most miserable death of all, but locking her up because I hadn't thought of a good way yet. That was a lie. I smiled as I laid out the huge nails and hammer, specially made for the nail table. I'll let her hear the screams of all those people that died because of her, and after they've soaked into her very soul, then I'll kill her. I've got pretty good a taste, huh? <laughs> Who are you? Huh? I'm Mion. Mion Sanazaki. Have you lost your mind from fear? Heh heh heh. No, you're not. There's no way you can be Mion Sanazaki. I stopped moving. Kei-chan. Shit. I decided the naming game would be over once we reached Shion's cell. Therefore, even if he guessed this time, it would be too late. Oh well, sure, I'll listen to you. This is your last chance. I see. Then if I'm not Mion, then who am I? Come on, Kei-chan, guess who I am. Why don't you try and save Mion, the girl who fell in love with you? A demon. Huh? You're not Mion. Mion was just here. Give her back. Kei-chan, is your brain really doing okay? You're not going crazy with fear? Don't touch me, you damn demon. Give her back. Give Mion back. My best friend. Give Mion back. I listened to him with a blank expression. I know it's nonsense to demand Mion's return when she's right in front of me. But, but, this person in front of me can't possibly be Mion. I can't accept that. Ah, ha, 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 ha. That's great. Ah, ha, ha, ha. So I'm not Mion or Shion. He doesn't even see me as my sister. No, wait, that's not it. Keiji protected the Mion in his heart until the end. He didn't accept the fact that Mion was a murderer. And not just that either. He protected the Shion in his heart as well. He didn't conclude that if Mion wasn't a murderer, then it must have been Shion. To Keiichi, Shion was someone who always made fun of Mion. But that was it. It wasn't like they'd known each other for a long time. But Keiichi protected her. He protected Shion from being a murderer. Ah ha 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 So that's why I'm a demon and not Mion or Shion, huh? A demon, huh? A demon. Ah ha ha ha. That's stupid. Ha 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 ha. But isn't that just right on the money? <laughs> and laughter and so on. Wah ha ha ha. Hey Chan, are you trying to drown me in my own tears? Wah ha ha ha. However, Keiichi didn't back off. He kept screaming. He screamed loudly so that I could hear his voice even when I was stuck inside of a demon. You can do it, Mion. Don't lose to this piece of shit demon. You're strong. Show me how strong you are. <laughs> Surely he isn't talking to me knowing that I'm the real Mion, right? He's just confusing us again. So there's no reason to let my heart be disturbed by Keiji's screams toward Mion. Come on, Mion. Mion, why... Did you lose to a demon like this? You're not that weak, are you? Don't give up. Fight. Fight. He's right. I didn't fight back. How did he know? How did he know I didn't fight back? I lost to the demon. After all, I'm weak. I'm not strong enough to defeat the demon. Even so, Keiji continued to talk to Mion. His voice had become hoarse and he had begun sobbing. He kept mumbling. Mion, Mion, Keichan, this may not be something pleasant to take to the grave with you, but you really seem to want to know, so I'll tell you just one thing. A long time ago, the demon came to live inside me. It was gnawing at my heart, trying to spur me to violence, but I suppressed it with my reason. The demon had become quiet, and I got to thinking it had gone away somewhere. 
As it turned out, I was wrong. It hadn't left. It was just sleeping inside me. That was the truth. When I learned about Satoshi-kun's disappearance, my weak soul couldn't take the sadness, and anger filled me to the brim. But the insanity had stopped there. Time had healed me, and embraced me with memories of Satoshi-kun. The demon woke up again due to a certain small opportunity. What do you think that opportunity was? It was such a little thing. This might be strange for me, a demon to say, but you're the reason that everything got so messed up. A tear rolled down my cheek. At the time, if you had given me that doll you got without hesitation, maybe everything wouldn't have gotten so twisted. You probably can't understand. I wouldn't expect you to. But, you see, all sorts of things started falling over like dominoes after that, and soon it was too much for me to control. It only makes sense that you wouldn't be aware of knocking over the first one, since it was too so small. But you're the one who set them up. If Kei-chan hadn't done something so insensitive, Xion wouldn't have cried. Xion cried and talked to me about it. That had reminded me of Satoshi-kun. I became jealous of her for having someone she loved so close to her. It was a very small jealousy, but that little feeling woke up the demon who was sleeping deep inside of me. After that, I just let the demon take over. The demon ate up all of the sadness from my loss of Satoshi-kun, and filled my heart with the notion of revenge, even though I knew that wouldn't make Satoshi-kun happy. Then the scary incidents that followed dragged me to hell, from whence there was no escape. That, that can't be, can it? It only makes sense that you wouldn't be aware of it. Even so, Kei-chan, you are without a doubt the cause. If you had nonchalantly given me that doll that day, then I don't think this would have happened. Was I simply transferring the blame to Keiichi? Such a tiny thing woke up the demon inside of me. The demon would have spoken up eventually. I was at fault. I didn't fight back. I let the demon live in my soul, and I let the demon possess me. Oh, oh. Keiichi didn't hide his tears. They were pouring down his cheeks. Maybe he was crying in my place, since I'd become a demon and couldn't cry of my own will. Can I start now, then? This method of torture is very simple. I'll nail one of these into the first joint of your left pinky finger. Then, I'll nail each one in order until I get to your thumb. And then, I'll go back to your pinky and nail one into the joint in the middle. So on and so on until I hammer 15 nails into your left hand. When that's over with, I'll do your right hand next. After that, if you're still conscious, I'll tell you. There are a lot of nerves bundled in your fingertops, so it hurts far more than you could ma imagine. Some people apparently pass out before you finish hammering 30 nails into their hands, so... I put a nail to... Keiichi's left pinky. Once I hit it with, it with the huge hammer, it would start, and it would be over. I didn't hesitate at all when I was torturing the others, but somehow I do when it's you. If this will satisfy your demon, Mion, if it will sate the demon, then do to me that you will. I didn't understand what he just said, so I tried to repeat his words in my head. Are you serious? Compared to how much I hurt Mion, this is nothing, right? No words. Do as much as you want. In exchange, promise me two things. After you're satisfied with causing me pain, forgive Xion. She's been punished enough to make up for her crime of sneaking into the storehouse, hasn't she? You. After all this, you still care about Xion more than yourself? I am Mion. Mion Sanazaki. So why are my eyes growing so damp when hearing Keiichi show concern for Shion? The other thing is that when you've had your fill, you disappear. Give that body back to Mion. No words. That's all. You know, you're... Are you not even considering possibility begging for your life or anything? 
Can I ask you to promise three things instead of two? The third is to leave me alive. Ah ha ha ha. You said two in the beginning, didn't you? So you can't have any more. That's a shame. Even in this situation, Keiichi and I joked around and laughed. And ah, then I knew. I knew why she fell in love with him. He's different from Satoshi-kun, but he's a good guy. I probably won't keep these promises, understand? I'm a demon, after all. I guess there's nothing I can do, then. Keiichi smiled and then closed his eyes. Keichan, I'll agree to just the third thing, okay? Huh? Your first wish, to save Shion. That's not possible. The demon will kill her. It's already been decided, so I can't stop it. So please give up Give up on that. I stroked Keiji's chin. As for your second wish, to give this body back to Mion, that won't happen either. After today, Mion will never come back. From today on, even if my body remains, it will be just a shell. Because the demon has taken it over. That isn't true. Mion is... Mion! Don't say such sad things. Like that she won't ever come back. Can you hear it? That sound. I, I'd been hearing a noise. I knew what it had to be. Bang. Bang. A dull sound was repeating in a regular rhythm. It was accompanied by a light tremor. People were trying to force open the iron door to the underground storehouse. You're late, so Reina probably called Oishi. That spaced out girl being so quick thinking was the one thing I didn't anticipate. I'll agree with you there. Really? I wonder how much Keichan really knows about Reina. Reina Ryugu, I won this time. Reina couldn't figure out who I was until the end. No words. Or maybe she did. Reina didn't seem confused about whether I was Mion or Shion. Perhaps Reina could tell Mion and Shion apart through her sense of smell. She was good at that kind of thing. No way. I'm overestimating her. Hmm. I brought out my stun gun so Keiji could see the sparks. You've probably never seen one before, right? It's a real stun gun. It's illegally modified, and its power has been increased by quite a bit. Was that what you hit me with before? That's not a toy children should be playing with, you know. <laughs> You're right. Bang. It must have broken the first door. The path was complicated, but there was no other door except for the one to this torture room. I won't kill you, but I will have to... I won't kill you, but I will have you go to sleep for a bit, Kei-chan. Oishi will be here soon. This will only hurt a bit. Keiichi bit down and smiled bitterly. I paused, hesitating a little. Keiichi opened his eyes to see what was wrong. I'm sorry for disgracing Mion. I made a promise before coming in here. Whatever happens, the Mion inside my heart won't change. Look, forget about that. If you ever see me after today, don't come near me. By then, it will be the demon that inherited my corpse. Bizzed. Keiichi fell unconscious. I locked the door to the torture room. I locked the door to the huge cave, too. That should give me some time. Shion, come on out. I opened the cell and told Shion to leave it. She was crying. You asked me to let Keichan go, so I did. He's out cold because of the stun gun. The police should be here soon, so they'll set him free. Ain't you? Ain't you? Oh. You still have something more to do. Shion has to escape from here. I took Shion to the cell with the hidden passage. Before that, I'll give Mion back to you. Eh? Take those clothes off. We're switching again. Here. 
the rubber band for your hair. Shion had no idea what was going on, but she changed her clothes, so uh, as I ordered her to. I gave her the flashlight, and she hung it around her neck. You go first. Find the hidden escape route at the bottom of the well. The light from the flashlight wasn't enough to entirely illuminate the way down. Nobody in their right mind would want to descend that well. But Shion obeyed and timidly climbed down the ladder. When she had p when she had passed entirely below the rim of the well, I brought out my stun gun and put it to Shion's head. Shion understood the meaning of that. Sis, I didn't kill Keichan just as you wanted. You told me I could kill you instead, didn't you? <laughs> I'm going to keep your pr promise. I'm going to keep- ah, uh, not your- I am going to keep our promise. Shion's hands and feet were clinging to a very unstable ladder, so there was no way she could protect herself. She was in a critical situation. You, who looks like Mion, need to fall into the bottom of the well and die. I look like Shion. Keichan will testify that I'm the victim. I'll wait in the cell for the police to get here. I'm sure they'll eventually find out the truth from our fingerprints. But by the time they get that far, I'll be hiding somewhere else. Pretty good, huh? <laughs> Are you killing me out of revenge for Satoshi? If you know that much, you should have been prepared. Go apologize to Satoshi-kun at the bottom of the well. Sis, Satoshi isn't at the bottom of the well. Huh? Didn't you say the bodies get dumped down here? All I said was that if he was killed at the Sonazaki house, this is where his body would be. What are you telling me now? Can't you be a little clearer? I also liked Satoshi. Yeah, I'm sure. I liked him after all. I was very sad when Satoshi Kun disappeared, so I looked into things. And? I interrogated Granny. I even thought about throttling her. Then she told me. She said she was only telling me as the successor, so I had to keep it a secret. What she said was something hard to believe. The hag said to Shion, the Sonazaki family had nothing to do with the disappearance of Satoshi-kun. Shion couldn't understand, so she asked again. The Sonazaki family held a lot of influence in the underworld because of our dad's connections. In fact, they used such illegal measures during the damn conflict. Therefore, people just assumed the Sonazaki family had pulled the strings when the damn construction incident took place. Even the hag laughed meaningfully and said suspicious things, so everyone believed she was the mastermind. But it was all a performance. It was a hoax by the Sonazaki family head. It was just a bluff. The family took credit for the incidents to make it look like they were pulling the strings. With the influence they already had, this bluff was very believable. Therefore, people thought of the Sonazaki family as one that had deep connections in the underworld and that they were capable of producing any sort of conspiracy. People have believed that since the damn conflict, Oryu had just smiled at things she had nothing to do with, as if she was pulling the strings. When the relatives saw that, they became fearful of Oryu's power. When the damn construction site manager was killed, a little typo, typo there, Oryu smiled meaningfully. When the relatives saw that, they assumed Oryu was behind it. When the Hojo couple fell off the cliff, when the Farud couple died violently, when Satoshi-kun's aunt died and Satoshi-kun disappeared, the hag just smiled meaningfully. Everyone believed the Sonazaki... Oh, excuse me. Everyone believed the Sonazaki family was behind all those incidents. That... that's a lie. Are you trying to tell me the Sonazaki family had nothing to do with any of it? How can I believe that? I don't think Granny would lie. Especially about Satoshi-kun's disappearance, since she said she knew nothing about it. Because Granny approved of the relationship between 
Satoshi Kun and you, remember? You ripped your nails off so she would forgive everything. No, that's a lie. Don't try to fool me. Then who made Satoshi Kun disappear? Who? That, I don't know. But it wasn't the Sonazaki family. It wasn't Granny. You know the curse system, right? The hag didn't need to give the command for Satoshi Kun to be attacked. All she had to do was look concerned, and then someone else would take care of it. That was the system. No words. Shion couldn't say anything in, in response. Even if the hag had forgiven him personally, as long as he was the object of the curse, the executioner would follow him forever. Granny told me that she had tried to find out who was actually behind this curse of Yashiro-sama for a long time, but she couldn't. Everyone believed it was someone in the village, but she couldn't find out who it was. She couldn't find out? Then why did the curse take place every year? Isn't it weird? But there wasn't anyone. There really wasn't. I told you that Rika Faru tried to attack me earlier with a syringe, didn't I? How do you explain that? She wasn't just acting out of desperation like a cornered rat. She came over to my house and attacked me with a bottle of pepper spray and a syringe. I bet Tomotaki-san was killed with that same stuff. That, I don't know. I can't believe Rika-chan would do something like that. I'm the one who saw how she died, and I still can't believe it. What a completely abnormal way to go. I don't think Shion and the Hag are lying. That would mean the Hag wasn't in as much control as we, th as we thought she was, though. She didn't know anything about that scary drug, or if the Farood family was the one executing the curse. If the Sonazaki family had nothing to do with it, then who made the series of mysterious deaths possible? Was it just a coincidence that something happened five years in a row on the night of a Tanagashi? That's impossible. A human must have made it happen. And it was all decided somewhere the Sonazaki family wasn't aware of. The Kimiyoshi family didn't know anything. Kimiyoshi believed the Sonazaki family was behind it. Was it the Furu family? With Frika's behavior and the elderly people who believed in her so blindly, did some kind of power exist around the Furu family that created the curse? No way. The Furu coupled themselves were victims of it. How could a little girl like Rika possess a power stronger than that of the Sonazaki family? No way, it's just impossible. There's <laughs> so many words. Same exact word, impossible. In other words, I had killed the heads of all the three families and was trying to bring an end to the whole thing, all as a result of a misunderstanding about the dark secret of Inamizawa. Then what about my revenge? Did I kill all the wrong people? People who had nothing to do with Satoshi-kun's disappearance at all. <laughs> That's good, Shion. You're still trying to turn the tables on me, huh? Sis, please, believe me. I'm not your enemy. I really am not. Please, believe me, sis. Shion begged with tears in her eyes. That would have affected me if I was still Shion's sister. But I don't feel anything anymore, because I'm a demon. I'll be done once I kill Shion. I've already decided that. If I don't finish it up, what would my existence be for? What about the life I devoted to revenge for Satoshi Kun? How dare she tell me all this nonsense to confuse me at the very end? If what she said was the truth, then what I'd done wasn't revenge. It was just the curse of the fifth year. Shion. If you are truly innocent, you can go to heaven. Apologize to Satoshi-kun for me. S A bluish-white spark lit up the darkness, and Shion disappeared into the well. Please apologize to Satoshi-kun in heaven. I can't, since I won't be going there. Instead, I'm going deep into hell. Jumping into this well would be too simple an atonement for what I've done. Until I find a perfect way to end my life, I'm going to live as best I can. Whew.
Best I can, huh? Receive new tip, notebook, page 199. A shocking end. Alright, so let's wrap this up real quick by reading page 199 of a notebook. Shion Sanazaki's last confession is dubious. Did the hag convince her that the Sanazaki family had nothing to do with it? Or is that the truth? In my own investigation so far, I've proven there are aspects of the curse which can't be explained by the Sanazaki family alone. So my notes were all bogus from the beginning. These 200 pages are full of bullshit. I thought of burning this notebook, but I won't do it. This notebook proves my guilt. I won't distort the facts. I won't burn it. After all, my life was only a notebook long. It's like a diary. I wonder if anybody will read this. If somebody does, please let them learn something from my stupidity. The series of mysterious deaths in Hinamizawa, dubbed a Yashiro Sama's Curse. If you're reading this, please find the truth. That's my only wish. 1983, June something. It's like June 1st, 1983. T11Z. It's like a time. Man Sanazaki. I thought it was. Sh no, that's Shion disguising as her. Well, this shit's confusing. It's like identical twins and all. But yeah. Other than that, I'm just going to end this here for now. So, next part, we're going to move on to, from what I assume. I think maybe the very last chapter. So, like, comment, and subscribe, and we'll see you later.